This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by our friends over at Ease.com, California's top one-stop website for legal marijuana delivery. Ease is the perfect website to pop open when you need to get your hands on top quality legal marijuana products fast. With orders taking just minutes to place and deliveries happening in under an hour, it doesn't get much easier to get stocked up on your favorite California legal marijuana flower, concentrates, edibles, topicals, and more. Whether you need vape pen cartridges, CBD pet products, or cannabis consumption accessories, Ease has you covered. Just open up Ease.com to start browsing their wide variety of products. And then if it's during legal delivery hours, and if you live in a part of California where Ease is active, you just get your order in. Big, big thanks to everyone over at Ease for all the support that makes today's news possible. One more time, that's Ease.com, which is spelled E-A-Z-E. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Wednesday, July 25th, 2018, and you're tuned in to episode 535 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Our top story today starts us off in New Jersey, where the big news broke yesterday that the state's attorney general, Gerbier Grewal, had instructed New Jersey's municipal prosecutors to stop charging people with crimes involving the possession of small amounts of marijuana, effectively decriminalizing cannabis statewide. The letter issued by A.G. Grewal instructs prosecutors to, quote, Seek an adjournment until September 4th, 2018 or later of any matter involving a marijuana-related offense pending in municipal court, unquote, saying that his office would work to develop more information for prosecutors in the meantime. This follows news last week where Attorney General Grewal smacked down an announcement from Jersey City that it would stop arresting people for cannabis crimes, so the change in direction was a little surprising, though certainly not unwelcome. There's a lot to unpack on this one, so I direct you over to NJ.com, where NJ Advanced Media was the first to break the story. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at MJTodayDaily.com and on our Twitter account at MJTodayDaily. Keeping our sights in the Garden State for our second headline, we have a fantastic opinion piece also published on NJ.com from New Jersey State Health Commissioner Sharif L. Nahal calling on New Jersey to boost the number of licensed medical marijuana dispensaries open to patients. Right now, there are just six open shops in New Jersey with six more vertically integrated licenses recently announced that will soon be handed out. But Health Commissioner El Nahal would like to see more. He's also calling for the legalization of medical marijuana edibles. This is a great story to open up and share. Our final top story today moves us out to New Mexico, where we have some numbers out of the state's medical marijuana industry that shows strong growth across the board for licensed dispensaries and by extension, the state's tax receipts. In the first six months of 2018, New Mexico's 35 licensed medical marijuana companies made just over $50 million in sales, with the state's top firm, Ultra Health, capturing $7.7 million of that total, which was a 78% jump for how the company did in the same time period in the previous year. The state's industry as a whole saw 2018 sales jump 27% from 2017. At the end of last month, New Mexico counted 54,857 registered patients, a jump of 24% in just one year. In short, things are going pretty well. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz out in headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, Ease.com, California's top one-stop website for legal marijuana delivery. If you value getting your legal marijuana products from a company that is super strict about following all relevant state marijuana laws, then you're going to love doing business through Ease.com. Ease only partners up with the top dispensaries in their active areas and are huge sticklers when it comes to adhering to all testing, packaging, labeling, and other marijuana rules and regulations. And they extend that focus on compliance all the way through their partnership chain. That results in better products and an easier and smoother buying process for you, the Ease customer. Start off today by opening up Ease.com to check if you live in a part of California where Ease is active. That's Ease.com, spelled E-A-Z-E. Thanks again to the good folks over at Ease for the support of today's headlines. All right, time for the Blitz. 
Mass Live is a good piece up looking at the current state of Massachusetts adult use marijuana licensing as the state's Cannabis Control Commission will next meet tomorrow to, among other things, consider the application for seven new adult use businesses, two cultivators, three dispensaries, and two processing facilities. Another big item for discussion is so-called host community agreements, which are deals signed between towns and the cannabis companies that require their blessing to open, many of which carve out significant percentages of sales to be given over to the town government. The commission is expected to issue guidance on the practice, which some Massachusetts lawmakers and tons of industry people have said is one of the reasons for how slowly the adult use industry has been rolled out so far. Some sad news out of California is a raging fire has destroyed a large cannabis cultivation farm known as Terp Town. The fire hit the cultivation facility on Monday and quickly ripped through five of the company's eight greenhouses. Leafly's David Downs is reporting that nearly 300 people work at the facility, though thankfully none were injured in Monday's fire. Kicking off a marijuana moment three-peat is Kyle Yeager, who picked up on a recent study that could shed some light on why cannabis consumers are more likely to fall on the thinner side of the weight scale, even as one of the best-known side effects from consuming cannabis is a heightened appetite. According to researchers at Indiana University, cannabis appears to improve how the body handles a certain kind of fatty acid that could lead non-consumers to put on more weight. There's still a lot that we don't know about how our body handles cannabis and its component compounds, so I'd add this one to your list to click through in full. It's way too easy to draw incorrect conclusions from scientific studies after they get passed through the news echo chamber. Always a good idea to get in the habit of clicking through to read the original studies yourself. Tom Angel takes the middle spot in this three-headline marijuana moment run with a story about a new bill introduced yesterday by Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard of Hawaii that would, if passed, call on the Department of Health and Human Services to study the effects of state legal marijuana. The measure has bipartisan support with Florida Republican Carlos Curbelo signing on as a sponsor. Marijuana Moments news writer Chris Roberts fittingly grabs this last Marijuana Moment headline as a Democrat running in West Virginia just saw his posted chances of winning a seat in Congress upgraded in a list of political predictions issued out of the University of Virginia Center for Political Analysis. West Virginia State Senator Richard Ojeda is running for a seat in Congress and has been considered something of a long shot, given how conservative West Virginia voters lean. But in a list of predictions issued yesterday out of the University of Virginia, the outcome of the state senator's House race was upgraded from leans Republican to toss-up. This is significant for us because State Senator Ojeda is a prominent supporter of marijuana legalization and introduced the medical marijuana bill that successfully passed into West Virginia law last year. We have news of embattled Denver marijuana dispensary chain Sweetleaf, which was thrown into the headlines last fall when Denver police arrested a large number of its workers for engaging in the process of looping, where customers would come in and make purchase after purchase of the maximum amount of cannabis allowed per transaction in a bid to accumulate large stocks of cannabis. On Monday, the company was able to win a stay against an order from Denver city officials to destroy their remaining stock of cannabis product. The company is appealing a decision that stripped them of all of their Denver operating licenses, and the stay to destroy their cannabis stock will remain in effect until that process is allowed to play out. And finally for today, we end the show on a bit of a lighter note as two Boston Public Radio hosts gave outgoing Boston Police Commissioner William Evans a new glass bong as a going away gift during a taping of a show yesterday for WGBH. Swing over to Mass Live for photos and more on this one. It's pretty funny. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another information packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily and visit our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Why do firefighters slide down poles? Because it's too hard to slide up. (laughs) Thanks to our sponsor, Ease, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. And those awesome jokes. To join the lesser strengths of the Patreon listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in, starting your day with marijuana today. Today.
One take, Shay. One take. <laughs>